Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'll be doing an unboxing of Grand Havoc. This is Perryville, October 8th, 1862. It's part of the American Civil War series. This is volume eight. There are already up to eight of these awesome games. This is from Revolution Games. It's the system designed by Herman Lutman, uh, the Blind Sword series. Uh, I don't believe this one is actually designed by him. No, this one is designed by Jeff Grossman, who's also developed some other ones in the series. Um, and kind of a first for me, um, at least in the in the Civil War series from Revolution Games, this one is actually the box copy and it is shrink wrapped. Whereas normally these come just in a bag. Um, they can come in a excuse me, they come in a Ziploc format, but uh, the boxed versions usually just come like in a bag for protection while shipping. But it's just you know it's just a, a Ziploc bag. They've actually gone to shrink wrap, so that's pretty cool. Also, it comes with I guess there was some errata that. Uh, came out before, you know, after sitting to press, but uh, before shipping. So they've already sent a thing here on the exclusive rules, just a couple of points here on 7.3B Fog of War uh, and some uh, replacement leaders, uh, some notes on some counters that have some errata. I don't know if they're planning to send out a fix on those or not, but this came with the game. So good to have. So now let's dig in and see what you get inside. So as usual, when you, uh, with this series, you start, you got some, some lovely historic artwork. I don't believe this is uh, fresh artwork, um, but this is covering the Battle of Perryville. All right, I have to turn it sideways to, to get it all in. So we start out, we have some dice. These are interesting. We have a white dice with red pips and a red dice with white pips. So as usual, we have to test them to make sure that they work. And they do, and white with red pips beats red with white pips, three to two. Very tiny dice, but they just, you know, you can put your own in there. If you get the Ziploc bag, you don't even get any dice, so. All right, so now we have our brigade activation displays, and the Union is larger because it's got a Buell alert track on it. But we have the activation display for the left wing for Polk, the right wing Hardy, first core, second core, third core. And they're single-sided, so I assume these are going to set off the map. And then we have our Grand Havoc CRTs. And there's two copies of this, one for each player. Unless you play True Solo playing both sides, then you, you, know, you only need one. And then it's got your cohesion test tables and your terrain key. And your break test table as well. Good quality card stock, very thick. And then look, we have a poster. Now this is a reference card as well. This is the your your uh, sequence chart, your turn sequence. Uh, start scenario, end of the scenario on uh, 30, after 36 turns. Victory point track and the broken track. That's one thing I love about this system is how the how broken units go in here and they they creep forward and then they come back into be rebuilt onto the map the, uh, if the player chooses to do so. So this is what would normally be in your Ziploc version of the game. This would be your cover, you know, your cover of the Ziploc game. And so they always, it's good if they repurpose it instead of wasting a piece of, of cardstock, they put your game board or your turn track on there. All right, and then we have two copies of the player aid. This is black and white, also still a nice card stock. It's got your sequence of play, terrain effects chart, brigade order details, rally chart. And on the back, you got one for the Union, you got one for the Confederates. And this is their uh, special uh, event chip uh, uh, descriptions and rules. Uh, like the, uh, the Confederates have aggressive leader and the Union has brigade initiative. They both have command confusion. Firing on friends, etc. So you get one each for each player. And then we have the Blind Swords series rules. And this is the one that covers all the series, which is like growing in numbers. This is eight for them, and I know there's some others from other companies. It's pretty awesome. And it's only 16 pages, black and white. 
not very dense text. I mean, it's all text though. Right, and there's some white space, but it's, it's some reading. I want you to know the system for the for these rules. Then you're just going to you're going to pretty much refer to the uh, exclusive rules for the Grand Havoc scenario or whatever scenario you happen to be playing. So here's a, some more art. This is the Perryville Battle State Historic Site. Artworks by John Cleveland. So this is this is in color. It's a, it's a nice matte finish though, so it's not too glossy and doesn't get a lot of reflection from the lights you see. And this comes in about 20 pages, no 16, 16 pages. Got the designer's notes on the back. And uh, got your uh, special rules for the scenario. Terrain examples. Cornfields, woods, fords and bridges, slope hex sides. So you got that. Like a previous design of mine, Grand Havoc was a design in search of a system. I first started work on a Perryville game more than a decade ago, soon after my first Perryville visit. I played the Brigade series game by David Powell, found it useful for understanding the basics of the battle, but for me it never produced the narrative that I found in Kendo's excellent history of the battle. Playing Herman Lutman's Blind Sword system, I thought Perryville would be a great fit. From the first playtest, I started seeing the same chaos and confusion, sudden collapses, and the plans that simply fell apart. I hope you will enjoy this vision of Perryville as much as I do. And it's got some tips for playing and a bibliography of things you might want to read, including the, the aforementioned Kenneth Knows Perryville Grand Havoc of Battle. University Press of Kentucky, 2001, the authoritative source on this battle. All right, now we have our sheet of counters. We have two sheets of counters, it would appear, or counters and markers. So, so here's counter sheet one, got a blue for our Union troops. Rousseau, Jackson, Chef. Rousseau's replacement, Jackson's replacement, Chef's replacement. Your skirmish orders, your various event tokens that can be drawn, fortunes of war, fog of war. Union victory point counters. And then our different divisions, brigades. And there's the back. See, very well centered. These are not pre rounded, so you will have to punch them, maybe clean them up a little bit with an organ lamination. It's 2.5 millimeter deluxe corner rounder, the only suitable tube tool for the job. And then counter sheet two, obviously we've got a lot more Union than Confederates. So we do have, you know what the, uh, it's interesting, we got the, the yellow dots. We have some on here too, I hadn't seen that before. Anyway, so we have our Confederate troops here. And then just then our gener generic counters. Got artillery fired markers, rebel victory points, again the events that can come up. And then our shake encounter. So a lot more uh, counter density for the Union versus the Confederates. And it's a chip pull system, which is really awesome because you can, it's very easy to true solo a, a chip pull system by playing both sides because you never know what chaos is going to happen. And there's the back of those counters. And then we've got our Grand Havoc map. It's a big map, a big paper map. And we will open it up. It is a full eight panel map. So I think we're coming in at seven or 20, 20, uh, yeah, 22 by 34. And it's portrait style. So it's gonna sit long ways on your table or you're gonna sit sideways to the map. Very cleaned up. We're still trying to keep the, uh, the beauty of the Rick Barber I think, although, you know, kudos to this designer for their own efforts, but uh, still got the flavor. So, it, so, it'll, so it'll match the, the original games in the series is what I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to discredit this artist. I'm just saying it's, you know, it's kind of good that they're keeping a, a similar look and feel with these maps. So here's Perryville here. But yeah, it's, yeah, there's no room for charts on here. I mean, this is a full, a full battlefield map. There's nothing on here 
but the battlefield. The uh, control points, the different sides, I believe, the three point chart locations. And here's where the Widow Gibson lives. So you want to send her flowers. So that is the map. All right. There we go. All right, so if you pick up a copy of Grand Havoc, the Battle of Perryville from Revolution Games, you're going to get that 22 by 34 inch paper map, two sheets of counters, the exclusive rules, the series rules. You're going to get a Union and Confederate event description chart. And on the back side has the sequence of play which is identical for both players, and then those are different, one for each player. You're going to get the beautiful artwork again on the back of the turn track chart. You're going to get two copies of the CRT, and the cohesion test and a terrain key. You're going to get the Union and Confederate Brigade activation displays. And in the box copy, you're going to get two dice. Red with white pips won this time, five to four. And that is everything that comes in the box for Grand Havoc, Perryville, October 8th, 1862, American Civil War, Volume 8 from Revolution Games. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye.